smile. Use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Lever Brothers Company presents the Pepsodent Show, My Friend Irma, created by Cy Howard and starring Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. Theirs will still be hot. My friend Irma. I live in a brownstone house on West 73rd Street in New York City. From my window, I can look out on Central Park, and right now it's covered with snow. I can see the squirrels scampering up and down the trees, looking for nuts. Now, if I, Jane Stacy, were a squirrel, I wouldn't have to scamper up and down trees searching for nuts. Why? Because I live with Irma Peterson, 115 pounds of squirrel food. <laughs> now, uh, don't get me wrong, I love her. It's just that... Uh, the, 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 the things she does are, well, they're just not average. For instance, the other morning, she left for work with a pillow under her arm. Irma? Uh, yes, Jane? What's the idea? Uh, Mr. Clyde says that ever since I've been working for him, he's been hitting his head against a stone wall, and I don't want him to hurt himself. <laughs> and that's the way it goes with Irma, day in, day out. And lately, it's getting even worse. You see, she's walked out on her old boyfriend, and her new one seems to have walked out on her. So right now, she is positively manless. This morning, I happened to glance through her diary, and it's really a saga of despair. For instance, her entry for January 8th reads, Have not seen Al for three days. He didn't call me today at 11. He didn't drop in at one, waited. But he didn't phone me at four and he didn't come around for dinner. But I wasn't disappointed because I didn't give him a thought all day. <laughs> January 9th, 10th, and 11th all had the same notation. Still no men in my life. And on January 12th? No men yet. I can't understand it. I keep looking under my shoes because my mother always said that when I grew up, I'd have men under my feet. <laughs> <laughs> January 13th. Gosh. January 14th. Oh, dear. January 15th. Today I thought my luck had changed. I took a ride in the country and a man waved at me, so I waved back. Then we got to talking, but in 15 minutes, I found out he was a scarecrow, so I dropped the conversation. <laughs> January 16th. That's all for today, dear diary. And Jane, don't get disgusted. There will be more news tomorrow. <laughs> With that, I quickly closed the diary. But I can't help being a little apprehensive about the effect all this will have on her work at the office. To Judge Warren B. Falsey, Appellate Court, Kings County, New York. Got that? Yes, Mr. Clyde. Then where is your notebook? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, here it is. Uh, I'm ready now. Good. <laughs> to Judge Warren B. Falsey, Appellate Court, Kings County, New York. In the matter of the judgment rendered by you in the Harrison case, Miss Peterson. Huh? <laughs> Where's your pencil? Huh? Oh, oh, gosh, I forgot it. Here, take mine. Now let's get this letter out. To Judge Warren B. Falsey. He isn't retired by this time. <laughs> Pellet Court, Kings County, New Where York. Where did you go on your honeymoon? Kings County, New Honeymoon. <laughs> honeymoon? Miss Peterson, what is this? What are you trying to do to me? I've got to get this letter out. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Clyde. I was just wondering. You can go ahead. Well, thank you. 
To Judge Warren B. Falsey, Appellate Court, Kings County, New York. In the matter of... How many children do you have? In the matter of... <laughs> children? <laughs> Miss Peterson, I have two children, and they both hate me. Do you know why? I'll tell you why. Because when I get through talking with you and go home, I'm a madman. That's why. <laughs> what are their names? Look, Miss Peterson, I can take your inefficiency, but I'm not going to sit here and give dictation to a lovesick moonstruck stenographer. Now, please go home and don't come back until you recover your senses. All right. No, no, don't you dare stay away that long. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah? Uh, what's this big crowd doing in front of the church? It's a wedding. Oh, so it is. Who's getting married? I don't know. Some man and woman, I suppose. <laughs> I'm glad that's the way it should be. Gee, uh, I wonder where they're going on their honeymoon. I don't know. I'm just driving them to Grand Central Station. It's a funny place to spend a honeymoon. Oh, well, when you're in love, I guess one place is as good as another. Yeah. Gosh, look at all those cans tied on the back of the car. Doesn't the horn work? <laughs> uh, sorry, lady, here they come. Gee, everybody's throwing rice and shoes. I uh, have a nice time. Happy married life and many more of them. <laughs> Everyone is in love and getting married and having children, and me, I have no one. Gee, if I didn't have that appointment at the beauty parlor tomorrow, I'd kill myself. <laughs> Hello, Jane. Oh, hi, sweetie. Irma. What's wrong? Your foot, it's all wet. And where's your shoe? Oh, I couldn't help it, Jane. I saw a wedding. Everybody was throwing rice and shoes, so I threw mine. <laughs> oh, it's so romantic. Well, look, honey, you'd better change your wet stockings before you catch pneumonia. All right, Jane. Gee, that wedding was so pretty. The bride and groom came down the steps, followed by their four children. <laughs> Honey, those were flower girls. Well, two of the girls were boys. <laughs> they must have belonged to the husband. Swell. Irma, when are you going to snap out of this romantic tar pit you've sunken into? Oh, I don't know, Jane. Here I am, 23 years old, healthy and fairly attractive, and no one wants me. Like my boss always says, it's a shame I was born. <laughs> Sweetie, it's not that bad. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little buzzing bees. One sweet like honey, from the other you get stung. <laughs> Why, Professor. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I'm a little joke I picked up from a man with the hives. <laughs> Come on in, Professor. Oh, you look so cold. Oh, I am. It's freezing in my room. Well, professor, you have the same type radiator in your room as we have in ours. That's right. I also have the same kind windows. But in yours, there's glass. <laughs> By the way, Irma, have you seen Al lately? his name around me. To me, there is nothing as ugly as old love. That's right. And speaking of something old and ugly, have you seen Mrs. O'Reilly? <laughs> I want to give her a piece of my mind. Why? I told her there's a hole in my wall and the cold air was coming in. So she sends me up a picture of herself to cover the hole. <laughs> Oh, that's very nice of her. Yeah, but I can't see any difference. They both give me the shivers. <laughs> uh, I know it's a sad story, but you don't have to cry. Oh, I'm not crying for you. It's just that... 
Oh, Jane, I'm so miserable. Oh, honey, I know how you feel. And I also know the cure. There's nothing better for bolstering a woman's morale than having something new to wear. So why don't you run out and buy yourself a cute new hat? You think that'd help? Why, of course. All right, I'll get a black one, because in my mind, my love for Al is dead, and I want people to know I'm in mourning. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, isn't it a shame, Professor? Of all the men in the world, she had to fall in love with a specialist, a man who has mastered the science of total unemployment. <laughs> yes, he's getting to be known as Uncle Sam's number one dependent. <laughs> But he's never done me any harm, so I gave him a very good reference. Reference? Yes, in the mail the other day, I received a form. I don't know what it was for, but I recommended him. <laughs> Who knows, maybe he's put in an application for retirement pension. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Jane. Hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. Oh, there you are, Professor. Did you receive me picture? Yes, thank you. I hung it over the hole in my wall. Oh, so you it kept out the draft. Oh, yes. And that puss of yours frightened away the mice. <laughs> Why, you old mongrel, no, no, you... No, 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 take it easy, Mrs. O'Reilly. Janie, Mrs. O'Reilly also got a form to fill out about Al. Tell me, Mrs. O'Reilly, did you say something nice? Why, of course I did. <laughs> I always say nice things about men. <laughs> Well, that's because of your warm nature. Thank you, Professor. And don't forget I have a warm heart. Yes, and with all that heat, it's too bad it had to melt your face out of shape. <laughs> no, you, you moth-eaten old Monsieur Elmer, now you... Let me tell uh, you uh, stop it, stop, stop it, please, the two of you. You should be ashamed of yourselves. I'm having enough trouble trying to cheer Irma up without going through this sort of thing. Oh, I'm sorry, Janie. You are right. Poor Irma. Janie, if there's anything we can do, just let me know. I would do anything in my power to mend her broken heart. Come on, Mrs. O'Reilly. Maybe you'll slip down the stairs and I can mend yours at the same time. <laughs> Richard, how nice of you to call. What? What is Al up to? Well, I don't know. Why do you ask? Oh, someone wrote you for references, too, and you gave him a good recommendation? You put down that he's a sure winner. Richard, how could you say that about Al? Oh, as long as he never loses that coin with the two heads, he'll always be a sure winner. <laughs> yes, I see what you mean. Yes, dear, I'll see you tonight. Goodbye. Come in. Hello, Jane. No, I ain't expected, but would like to have a few words with you. Well, all right, Al. What's on your mind? Well, it's about me and chicken. I've tried to forget her, but it's no use. The other day I was in a Turkish bath and I saw her face in the steam room. <laughs> Gotta stop. She don't belong in places like that. <laughs> Well, you have my sympathy, Al, but you brought it on yourself. There's nothing I can do about it. Well, I know. And that's why I have taken such drastic steps. What do you mean? Jane, you'll probably think I've gone berserk, but felt I had to do something spectacular. So I did a crazy thing. What? Jane went out and got myself a job. <laughs> oh, Al, you've said that many times. Yeah, Jane, but this is on a level. I'm working from nine to six, taking 15 minutes for lunch and putting every cent in the bank. Well, when did you start on the job? Tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm going to do. Now, if chicken will only take me back. Well, Al, uh, I don't know what to say. Uh... Al, what are you doing here? I thought I told now, hold you. Hold it, chicken. Uh, look, the two of you, I had fireworks last 4th of July. I can wait till the next one, so you two have the ring to yourselves. Au revoir. Now, Al, I want you to go. Chicken, will you at least give me the courtesy of talking this over like, like two businessmen? All right, two businessmen. Good. Come sit on the sofa with me. <laughs> Nothing doing, Al. We're out of that business. <laughs> Please, Chicken, you've got to listen to me. Ever since we've been separated, my life is, well, as you might say, my life is an empty shell. Without a nut. Won't you please come back? No, Al, pretty speeches will get you nowhere. 
You promised we'd be married in 1948, and I spent the whole year knitting a sweater for our first baby. I'm sorry, chicken. Well, it's all right. It wouldn't have fit him anyways, unless he had three arms or a long neck. <laughs> but, chicken, you ain't heard the good news. I'm starting a job tomorrow. I'm sorry. Don't you see, chicken, for you, I have committed social suicide. None of my friends will talk to me. You know, Al, it's too late. You once lit a flame in my heart, but that's all over. I've gotten rid of my heartburn. <laughs> Bye. Run the tip of your tongue over your teeth. If you feel a slippery coating, you have film on your teeth. And you need Pepsodent with Irium to remove it. For film is worse than you think. Film collects stains that make your teeth look dull. Pepsodent toothpaste removes film, makes your teeth look bright. Film harbors germs that cause unpleasing breath. Pepsodent removes film, makes your breath fresh and clean. Film glues acid to your teeth. The very acid many dentists agree is the cause of tooth decay. Pepsodent toothpaste removes film and the acids it contains. Film never lets up. It forms continually on your teeth. Yes, you have to fight film every day. So brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent toothpaste because no other toothpaste can duplicate Pepsodent's film-removing formula. No other toothpaste contains irium or Pepsodent's gentle polishing agent. So start now to fight film. Brush your teeth twice a day with Pepsodent, the toothpaste with an exclusive formula for removing film. Well, I came back from shopping expecting to find Irma and Al contentedly languishing in each other's arms. But instead, I found Irma alone in the kitchen opening a can of Strongheart. This can mean only one thing. Her love has gone to the dogs. <laughs> Irma? Yes, Jane? Oh, you're crying, sweetie. Where's Al? I sent him away. I'm through with him. But, honey, he said he had a job. Oh, how can you believe anything Al says? He once told me all his friends were blue bloods. Well, you should have known better than that. Oh, they were blue, all right, but that was only because they were cold standing in the unemployment line. <laughs> I know, sweetie, but maybe he's changed. Irma, I don't like to tell you how to live, but since you and Al broke up, you've been going around like a lovesick calf, and it's beginning to affect me. What do you mean, Jane? Well, like this morning when you had Al on the brain and tried to pour my coffee. Well, it was a natural mistake. I just forgot to give you a cup first. <laughs> Honey, why kid yourself? You've got it so bad for Al, you don't know what you're doing half the time. That's ridiculous, Jane. How can you say a thing like that? I always know what I'm doing. Then, for goodness sake, stop trying to put those shoes on. But I can't go out barefooted. I know, honey, but it's a little difficult to put one pair of shoes on over another pair. <laughs> oh, dear. Excuse me, girls. It's only us again. Oh, Irma, I've been wanting to speak to you. Yes, we've been wondering, did Al get the job? Yes, but it hasn't made any difference to me. I, I think some people can't change. They're beyond hope. That's exactly what the plastic surgeon told Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> he did not. He just said that if he removed some of my chins, it would destroy the balance, and my head would keep tilting back. <laughs> Good, then maybe you'd see that hole in my ceiling and fix it. Now look, Professor, I don't want to be discussed in public. We came here to find out about Al. Well, there's nothing to find out. I'm through with him. From now on, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be gay. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> well, get her. Yes, from now on, men are just playthings. Goodbye. Where are you going? I'm going out to look at some toys. <laughs> But, Mushy, you don't understand. Chicken means everything to me. And without her, there's no point in me taking the job. Well, gee, Al, I'm your pal, but I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, in a case like this, there's only one man to call. Who else? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, 
Got a problem. Want to get Irma back. Have tried everything. What's my move? Try getting her sympathy? It always works with your wife, huh? How, Joe? You leave just one dollar in your wallet? Well, how does that get her sympathy? Oh, she's sorry there ain't more. <laughs> no, no, Joe, want something more clever. What can I do? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Thank you, Joe, and goodbye, noble friend. Any luck, Joe? Yeah, Joe gave me a natural. I pretend I'm sick. You break the news to Irma, and she's got to come running over. It's what they call the maternal instinct. Well, I wouldn't know. I never see my mother much. You see, she went straight. <laughs> well, don't waste any time. Get over and tell Irma I'm sinking fast. Now, leave it to me, pal. Come in. Hello, lady. Are you Chicken Peterson? No, I'm Jane Stacy. Good. I'm mushy. Well, thanks, but I'm not in the mood. <laughs> what do you want? Al is sick. Sick? When did this happen? Quite sudden. He's in his hotel room, laying on the couch, sick as a dog. Well, I is he really helpless? Yes, indeed. Well, did you take his pulse? Look, miss, he's my pal, and when a guy is laying helpless, I ain't gonna swipe nothing. <laughs> I tell you, he needs his chicken. Well, if he's that sick, maybe I'd better run over. No, no, no. He, he don't want you. I, I mean, uh, uh, you're liable to catch it. He wants his chicken. Well, couldn't she catch it? Well, uh, uh, it wouldn't show on her. Uh, you see, uh, Al has chicken pox. Who do you think you're kidding? I know what Al is up to. Come in. Oh, hello, Jane. Am I intruding? Oh, not at all, Richard. Mr. Uh, Mushy... Would you mind waiting outside a minute? Not at all. Uh, hey, mister, did you go to Harvard? Yes, I did. I thought so. Didn't you study criminology? Why, yes, but I can't seem to place you. You can't? You don't understand it. I was case number 604, remember? You and your class visited us. <laughs> I'll be waiting, lady. Richard, don't look so startled. Al is up to one of his tricks. He's pretending he's sick, so Irma will go over and nurse him. Well, Jane, it's none of my business, but it seems to me that Irma was much happier when she was going with Al. And since he now has a job, maybe if she goes to him, they'll patch up their quarrel. You mean we should let her think he really is sick? If that'll bring them together, it's worth a try. The girl's cracking up. I saw her talking to herself. And that's the last person she should be talking to. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Oh, hello, Jane. Hello, Richard. Hello, Irma. Irma, honey, I have a message for you from Al. His friend Mushy is outside. Oh, is that who that man is? Yes. Al is sick, and he wants to see you right away. Oh, my poor Al, sick? And he was looking forward so much to keeping his new job. He was... Uh, yes, yes. His sudden illness must be a tragic disappointment. Well, Irma, what are you going to do? Do? Naturally, I'm going right down there and nursing back to health. After all, his mother is 65 and not in her right mind, and I'm the only one who can take her place. <laughs> who is it? It's me, Al. Your chicken. Oh. <laughs> Come in, chicken. Oh, my poor Al. Come closer, chicken. I'm sinking fast. I'm right beside you, Al, honey. Take my hand, chicken. Like this? Uh-huh. Now put my arm around you. All right. Thanks. <laughs> I'm so weak, I can hardly breathe. Neither can I. You're squeezing me so hard. <laughs> chicken, you're crying. Oh, no, Al, when you squeeze me, I spill some of the soup I brought you. <laughs> soup? For me? Chicken, you didn't have to do that. Sandwiches and hard-boiled eggs would have been good enough. <laughs> oh, Al, you're so brave. Here, you'd better take it while it's still hot. Thanks, Chick. And when I get better, I'm going right back to work, even if it takes years. <laughs> Richard! 
Richard, do you think we did the right thing, leading Irma to believe Al is really sick? You know, Jane, my conscience is beginning to bother me, too. Uh, excuse me. Hello? Hello, Jane. Gosh, I'm terribly worried about Al. Uh, honey, you might as well know the truth. There's nothing wrong with Al. He was never sick. Never sick? Then why has he turned so brown? Brown? Yes, it happened right after he drank the soup I made. Irma, what did you put in that soup? Nothing but fresh vegetables in that bottle of meat sauce that was on the kitchen table. Meat sauce? Irma, get a doctor. Why? That was a bottle of brown shoe polish. <laughs> pretty sick, but he's now fully recovered. That is, he was fully recovered, but Irma happened to ask him when he was going to start to work, and that gave him the fastest relapse you've ever seen. Irma? Uh, yes, Jane? When do you think Al will be well enough to go back to work? Well, he said he was going the first thing tomorrow morning. What made him decide so suddenly? I don't know. I walked into his room with another bowl of homemade soup, and he jumped off the sofa and said he was all better. <laughs> And you know, sometimes I think there's a spark of genius in the mind of my friend Irma. Jane? Yes, Irma? Uh, you aren't angry with me? Honey, if I put my mind to it, staying angry with you would be a full-time job and I haven't the strength. <laughs> well, uh, do you want me to do it now? Do what? Curl your hair. What on earth are you talking about? Well, remember last night when we had words, uh, I don't remember just which ones, but you said, Irma, someday you're going to put a permanent curl in my hair. So should I do it now? <laughs> Irma Peterson, where you get those notions you rave about, I don't know. Oh, Jane, that's just it. A rave home permanent. Yes, ladies. Now you can take the guesswork out of home permanent waving with rave. The new personalized home permanent, a brand new member of the great Pepsodent family. The famous Pepsodent Lever Laboratories proudly present Rave, the new improved home permanent that eliminates guesswork. Only with Rave, you get the easy to use Dial a Wave chart, your guide to the one right wave for your kind of hair. You'll find a Rave wave is gentler, easier, up to twice as fast as the old type home permanents. A rave wave is long-lasting, yet softer, more natural-looking from the very first day. Make your next permanent a personalized rave home permanent. It has been granted the Good Housekeeping Seal and has been accepted for advertising in the journals of the American Medical Association. A complete rave kit is only $2. Rave refill kit, $1. Both kits contain the exclusive Dial-A-Wave chart. On sale for the first time today. Get yours at your favorite drug or cosmetic counter. My Friend Irma is produced and directed by Cy Howard and stars Marie Wilson as Irma with Joan Banks as Jane. Park Levy writes the script with Stanley Adams and Roland McLean, and it is brought to you by Pepsi and Toothpaste with Arium, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company. Part of Al was played by John Brown. Hans Conried is Professor Kropotkin. Gloria Gordon was heard as Mrs. O'Reilly. Music was under the direction of Lud Gluskin. This is Wendell Nile speaking. The R-I-S-K, brisk flavor. That's what you get in Lipton tea. Yes, brisk flavor that picks you up, brings you back alive in a hurry. Brisk flavor that comes from Lipton's very special blending of the finest orange pico and pico teas. Try it. You'll find that this brisk flavor of Lipton's leaves you refreshed and ready to go again. And you can enjoy it often because even wonderful tea like Lipton's costs less than any drink except water. Always ask for Lipton tea, the brisk tea with that heartwarming Lipton lift. Tune in one hour earlier next week and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, followed by the Pepsi and Show, My Friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.